really appreciate the song service this morning. I'm sure you did too. Appreciate the Dennis, Sister Sandy, Bill, Matt, Sister Beth, and my wife. Evenings, and then the preparation that's given, the time that's spent uh, seeking God for those songs that will bring us close to Him and prepare the way for the message of the Word of God. Amen. Turn with me in your Bible to the book of 1 Samuel, chapter number 28. 1 Samuel, chapter number 28. You ever feel like there's lots of things you want to say for your message? I feel like there's a lot of things I want to say. I'll try to be precise. I'll try to uh, address a few things that I think are noteworthy to be addressed. But in 1 Samuel, chapter 28, We're going to start reading at verse number three. I'll bounce back and give a little bit of information about the first three verses there and even some prior chapters, what's happening as we set the, the page of what's happening uh, for the message. Amen. The Bible says, Now Samuel was dead, and all of Israel lamented him, and buried him in Ramah, even in his own city. And Saul had put away those that had familiar spirits and the wizards out of the land. And the Philistines gathered themselves together and came and pitched and shoot uh, and them. And, and Saul gathered all Israel together and they pitched in Gilboa. And when Saul saw the host of the Philistines, he was afraid. And his heart greatly trembled. And when Saul inquired of the Lord, the Lord answered him not, neither by dreams, nor by Urim, nor by prophets. And Saul said unto his servants, Seek me a woman that hath a familiar spirit, that I may go to her and inquire of her. And his servants said to him, Behold, there is a woman that hath a familiar spirit at Endor. And Saul disguised himself and put on other raiment. And he went, and two men with him, and they came to the woman by night. And he said, I pray thee, divide unto me by the familiar spirit, and bring me him up, whom I shall name unto thee. I'm going to stop there. We know the name of the person was the one who has died, who is Samuel. Now, I'm going to put a disclaimer here, first of all, because I know that sometimes there can become these theological uh, discussions, and I just want to put them to rest and, and, and get to my point this morning. So we know that, that Saul is seeking a familiar spirit, and I'm not looking into answering this morning the theological debate of whether it was demonic activity or whether it was Samuel. Yes, I have my thoughts on this. And I'm not even going to present them in this message. Uh, but what I do want to say is this, that any way you slice it, any way you dice it, when you begin to communicate with the dead, there is not going to be a good outcome. Mm -hmm. I don't believe we should go there. I don't think it's needful. I believe that it, it takes the place of what God desires to do in communicating with us through His Spirit. Amen. And so uh, as we look at the road to Endor, I believe that there are some good, good noteworthy things. And I'm asking the Spirit of the Lord that He will help us this morning. I'm asking Him to help us this morning. I believe His Spirit is here. I believe that God wants to take us deeper and a closer relationship with Him. But we find that the prophet Samuel is dead. I preached to him a couple weeks ago that as a young boy, the Spirit of the Lord began to call to him, Samuel! Samuel! And Eli, the high priest, which should have been communicating to the nation of Israel on behalf of God, had turned the deaf ear to God, who had become spiritually lukewarm. I'll even go to far, far to say he has gone ice cold, and he's going through the motions of spiritual things and leaving the things of God far behind him. He no longer knows the voice of God, Sister Tina. He no longer knows what it's like to, to be on fire for the things of God. God, help us mm -hmm. to keep the fervor and the fire of God alive in our life. 
I believe that God does want to speak to us. I believe that every one of us that is here this morning, that God wants to speak to you in your heart and in your life. I don't believe it's a journey of youth, and I don't believe it's a journey of just uh, adolescence and, 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 and young adulthood, but I believe that through our lifetime that God wants to speak to people. Is God speaking to you? And if not, why isn't He? And if not, why aren't you seeking it? God wants to speak to you in your life. This morning, I'm not going to preach a thrilling sermon that is going to make you want to grab hold of these fans and swing. I'm not going to preach a message that is so encouraging that, that, that this makes you feel lofty and good, but I'm going to preach to you the truth of God's Word. And it will step on my toes as maybe it will your toes, but it's a needful message for each of us. And Brother Seville doesn't do it in any way to hurt or damage a person. But I do it that the Spirit of God will challenge us to bring us to a place where His Spirit will speak to us. Because if He's not speaking to us, we're likely to go somewhere else where other voices that aren't good will speak to us. Samuel is, or Saul was here at the place where he is wanting the voice of God to speak to him. You find that David and him are at odds. David is now aligning himself with the Philistines. Let me say that it is not God's will for David to make an alliance with the Philistines. However, we find that he is making an alliance with the king of the Philistines. If you look there in verse number 2, Achish, uh, uh, David is making an alignment with him. He is going to fight against the nation of Israel. David has aligned himself with him. Uh, that has come to David that, 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 that the king of the Philistines is going to make him captain of the guard. He is going to give him a position that is high and it is good and it is lofty. Not all of our positions that we will find in life will do anything for us spiritually. In fact, they may do harm to us spiritually. So watch the accolades of the world. Watch the promotions of the world because they may not be what God has for you in your life. Mm -hmm. So here it is that David has aligned himself with the Philistines and by far we find that this is one of the darkest days of Saul. He is not only fearful of the Philistines, but he is fearful of that of David uh, because uh, he knows uh, the, the, the richness of David. He knows the smarts of David. Uh, we find, and I don't want to get ahead of myself here, but he's warring against the Philistines and he is fearful. And this isn't the first time that we find Saul being fearful of the Philistines. Uh, remember that the, the, the Philistines, uh, the raging war against the Israelites, and it, uh, it appears that, that, that Saul is seeking out the voice of God, but it's staggering. He can't find it. He goes to Europe. He goes to the Thummim. He goes to the prophets. He goes to the seers. He tries to do everything he knows to do. And now Samuel is no longer here. He is dead. He's off the sea. And so he finds himself in a terrible predicament. Let me tell you that the greatest thing that you and I can do in our life is learning to find the voice of God for ourselves. Finding a place of prayer. Finding direction in the Word of God. Finding those who have walked through similar paths. Amen. And God has been magnified through their life. And we find refuge in the knowledge of their relationship that will help us. So... The Philistines raging war against the Israelites, and, and they're very serious about it. The Philistines have uh, continually harassed the Israelites throughout Saul's reign, and it appears that they're determined that this time that they are going to break the backs of the military strong Israel. So Saul is worried. And now he's concerned because David has made an alliance with him. And uh, Saul dreads this massive Philistine army. 
and he's shaken to learn that David is a part of that. Uh, we, we, we find that David has certainly aligned himself with, with, with that king. And David, he may be a harp player, and he may be a singer, but he is a fierce warrior, and he's not one that you want to reckon with. But Saul's scared. He's concerned. Can you imagine how Saul feels going up against David? We're getting somewhere. Let me lay the foundation. Can you imagine how Saul feels when he's going up against David when he said prior and in this chapter, uh, chapter number 24, verse number 20, he said, And now, behold, I know well that thou shalt surely be king and that the kingdom of Israel shall be established in thine hand. He knows that Samuel's already anointed David to be king and he's fearful of him. And so he's fearful of, of, the, uh, of the Philistines. He's fearful of David. He's very concerned. We were finding that Saul was aware that he's in danger and he's desperately afraid. You see, fear's always been something that has crept up its ugly head in the life of Saul. Do you remember that when the, 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 the Goliath, the Philistine, came out and, 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 and Saul was scared? He didn't want to fight against Goliath. He could find no one else to fight against Goliath. But David came, and though he, he, he was just a lad, he was too small for, for Saul's armor. Uh, he had not proven it. He laid Saul's armor aside and said, I will fight against him through the Spirit of the Lord. Uh, this isn't the first time that, that Saul has lived his life fearful. Listen, if fear is a part of your life, and it always seems to creep up its ugly head, I want to encourage you, seek the voice and the face of God. Find His direction. And so, the Word of God says that Saul desperately inquires for the Lord, and he is not I want to deal with this for just a moment. There's a problem that not only Saul has, but the church has. Mm -hmm. That they don't know how to seek the face of God. They don't know how to find His Word. They don't know how to find His direction. They don't know how to find Him in a place of need. And so He wasn't accustomed to finding it. Do you remember uh, previous chapters? You'll find that Saul has lost his father's donkeys. And, and, and someone says, let's go find Samuel. Well, I don't have anything to pay him. I, well, well, I'm for the Samuel. But Samuel gives direction. Even when the anointing of the king was, and Saul, Samuel was there, Saul was off and he was hit. He didn't know anything about the direction of God. He never familiarized himself with seeking the face of God and the direction of God. Listen, my friend, I want to tell you, brother and sister, we need to familiarize ourselves with seeking the face of God. We need to know what it's like in prayer to seek the face of God. We need to know what it's like to find the solution in the Word of God. Amen. And, and know that God is there being a part of the process. Listen to how Saul died. I know I'm getting ahead of myself a little bit. But in 1 Chronicles 10, the Bible says, So Saul died for the transgression which committed against the Lord, even against the Word of God, which he kept not, and also for asking counsel of one that had a familiar spirit to inquire of it, and inquired not of the Lord. Therefore he slew him and turned the kingdom unto David the son of Jesse. Do you want to die not knowing how to seek the counsel of God? Do you want to die with the reputation of seeking counsel everywhere else but, 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 but by the face of God? Listen, we have the World Wide Web at the touch of a few buttons. You can find out all the information you want. Most of us in here probably have. Amen. But I want to tell you that when it comes to your soul, amen, there's not a click of a button that will help you. The world will not be able to give it to you. Only when we get on our knees and on our face before God and we desperately seek God. And when He is quiet, we wait on Him till He answers. Mm -hmm. Saul had never familiarized himself with knowing the voice and the direction of God. Fear is raging high. The odds are stacked against him. What is he going to do? He seeks, but there's no answer. 
Saul, this man who had once risen above the rest, the Bible said, the head and shoulders, he was above the rest, the first king, but yet so much potential, and yet he died in a bachelor condition. Uh -huh. I want to look at this room to end on. I want to look at what took Saul there this morning, the next few moments. The Bible says that God had touched the heart of Saul and all those who were in the house with him. The potential that Saul had was great. No, it wasn't God's plan. It's the picture of the flesh. But God did not set out for Saul to fail. Saul had every privilege and opportunity to live for God and live a kingdom for God. But yet he went down the road at Endor and he died in a backslidden condition. It is my concern this morning for a church world that once knew the voice and the message of the cross, that once knew the power of the Holy Ghost, that once knew how to hear the voice and the direction of God. Somewhere in the middle of life, you get off track and you go down the road to end or, And the story does not end well when we go down that road just as it did for Saul. Listen, you can be right here this morning and you can be going down the road to Endor even though you sit in this sanctuary. God help us because it's a process. There was once a point we read in Scripture where Saul had started it all out right. Brother Minnis, he got rid of all the witches, all the medians. He got rid of, uh, of every a sorcerer. He called them an abomination. And then a few verses later, we find him seeking out counsel in them. Amen. We can get rid of things in our life, but until we live in a place where we keep them out of our life, amen, we can still invite them back and die and go to hell. It's getting rid of things in our life. <clears throat> Leading them out. I want to look at the steps that Paul and Saul took. The very first thing that I see is that he took the route of seeking a familiar spirit. A lot of people, they search out a lot of substitutes for their walk with God. They want to walk with a lot of things besides walking with God. The concerning thing this morning all across America, if you love your sin very well, you can find a church that will preach and tell you that you can live in your sin. It's seeking out a familiar spirit. Amen. It's seeking out something that is contrary to the Word of God. Amen. You look long enough, you'll find someone to match yourself up with. You seek long enough, you'll find a church that will tell you it's okay to do it. You seek long enough, you'll find that you can let in your flesh, you can live a convenient lifestyle and have yourself completely confused. Mm -hmm. But God wants you to live righteous. God wants you to live holy. You can't just take what you want out of the Word of God and forget about the rest. We have to take the entirety of God's Word and build our life upon it. Listen, a Christian is about building a relationship with, with Jesus Christ and building our life upon the entirety of the Word of God. So everything God's Word says, we live our life by. Listen, every one of us have weaknesses. We have flaws in our life. Don't break at the flaw, but allow God to take that flaw and change it and strengthen it through His Word. Amen. If there's things that we struggle with in our life, amen, we apply the Word of God to it. We apply the blood of Jesus Christ to it. Amen. And we say, God, I want the entirety of Your Word. This area of my life is not pleasing to You, so I surrender it to You. I look to You. I want to hear from You. God, even when You're quiet, God, I want to find out through Your Word how to seek Your face harder and stronger. God, I'm going to find myself in a place of prayer and I'm going to get more desperate in prayer. I'm not going to go somewhere else seeking a, a route that I can live in my sin, but I'm going to get rid of sin. Amen. <coughs> so I, I want to be very cautious. But you know, I, I'm disturbed. It's, it, it's some churches I, I read this week, Focus on the Family, had an article that I read of a church, and they're very well known for their music. I love their music. Uh, they're, 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 they're in another country. Opened a church up here in the States, and now that church is allowing same-sex marriage. That is contrary to the Word of God. You seek a familiar spirit, you'll find a familiar spirit. Amen. 
Here he is. He's seeking a familiar spirit. The Word of God says in Matthew, many will say unto me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? And in thy name you have to cast out devils. And in thy name done many wonderful works. Then will I, uh, I, I, then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you, you that work iniquity. Let me tell you how to build the house this morning. It's building it upon the Word of God. Amen. Learning to hear from God for yourself. I believe that God wants to speak to every heart that is in here. I love when the presence of God comes down and all oh, we feel good. But oh, I got to tell you that I would never truly appreciate that if I did not feel the convicting power of God that brings me to an altar of repentance first. See, Saul had got rid of things and didn't allow them to go in his life. A challenge from the pulpit to every pew. Have there been things that God has convicted you of, but because of convenience sake and because of fear, you allow things to come back in your life that at one time you laid down? Also, you have got rid of all the sorcerers. You have got rid of all the witches. You have got rid of all the medias. You have called them an abomination. And now you bring them back into your life. Listen, when God deals with us in areas of our life that are biblical convictions, I want to stand there. I want to, I want to go down any rabbit trails. I want to say that when we stand there, areas of our life, where God has biblically convicted us and then we pick them back up. It's going down the road to Endor. And the result of the road to Endor is not good. So, picked it back up after he cast out all the unrighteous. And then he goes to the witch of Endor, the Bible says, by night. And he disguises himself. See, the Word of God says this, that for us who are blood-bought, that are saints of God, ye are children of light and the children of the day. We are not of night nor of darkness. You see, Saul was doing something he didn't want anyone else to see him doing. It. He knew he was wrong. He disguised himself for the sake of not wanting anyone to see him. He did not want to be recognized, and he went by night. Let me tell you, if there's things that we are doing that we don't want pastor to see, or Sunday school teacher to see, or our spouse to see, or any other saint of God to see, let me tell you, you are headed down the road to Endor, because what we can do, we can do over in the light because we live in freedom and we are not children of the night but we are children of the day. Saul tried to cover himself so he would be unrecognizable but do you know what? The witch recognized him. I know you, you're Saul. I won't do anything to you, I promise. Listen, when we try to cover up things in our life that are ungodly, we only deceive ourselves. We don't deceive God. It's going down the road to anger. God wants to give us life. God wants to give us victory. God does want to give us confidence and freedom. But when we hold on to things that keep us in fear and that keep us away from the word and the voice of God, it's going down a road that leads to destruction. Saul, it's interesting that as he goes to Endor geographically, he would have to bypass a place just outside the city of Jerusalem called Ramah. And that is the place where Samuel is buried. <laughs> the man of God, the word of God, that which has been spoken, Ramah, Samuel, 
All those things combine together. Let me tell you that when the preaching of God's Word no longer affects us in our life, I'm telling you we are in a dangerous position. We are going down a wrong road very quickly and very fast that is not a road of a good ending. Amen. When the Word of God no longer challenges us, when the Word of God no longer affects us, it's a very bad place to be. In the book of Amos, Amos says, Behold, the days come, saith the Lord God, that I will send a famine in the land, not a famine of bread, nor a thirst of water, but of hearing the Word of God. There should be something in our hearts that love the Word of God, that it's direction to every area of our life, that it's food for our soul, that it's nourishing, that it's satisfying. When, when everything else takes place of the Word of God, or you say of the Word of God is null and invalid, it's outdated, that that's a dangerous place to be. We need the Word of God in our life. We need the voice of God. <coughs> we negate it, we neglect it, we cast it off, we willfully put it aside. It's heavy. Now we're going to end. And Saul died in a back slitting state. This morning, the message is this, is that we have to check ourselves. We have to check ourselves. We know the message wasn't good. I'll ever you look at Samuel being seen, it scared the witch, it scared Saul. It wasn't a good message. But it wasn't good the whole journey to get it where he was at. It was displeasing to God. Your ask Sister Holly, she'll come to the piano. She's able to this morning, I'm sure. I think you folks know me well enough this morning to know this. That the word of God preached has always been that I love us and I want us to go deep. This morning I gotta ask you to please be challenged by the Spirit of God as the Word of God. Samuel warned Saul that God said to destroy the Amalekites. But Samuel didn't listen to Saul. Or Saul didn't listen to Samuel. Sorry. Saul didn't listen. Remember, he spared King Agag. When God speaks, we have to entirely listen to what he says in our life. Saul had to pass by the altar which was built in the beginning of his walk as king. The Bible says in 1 Samuel 14, verse number 35, And Saul built an altar unto the Lord. The same was the first altar that he built unto the Lord. Just outside Jerusalem, there was an altar that was built. The same grave that led past Samuel's altar. Oh, his, his burial, his grave. Sister Rachel was the same road that went by an altar that was built. I'm concerned. I'm concerned for our church, for the church in general. Are we walking by the altar? How much time do we spend praying and seeking the face of God? I look at Saul's life and I think this. Brother Dennis, it didn't have to be this way. Brother Josh, God could have used it. But his whole life was marked by Sister Rachel not knowing the voice of God, always doing the things his own way. He didn't listen to Samuel. He was very jealous and hateful of David. He needed to make things right with David, and he never did. You see, we have to make things right in our life. If we never do, it takes us to a very bad condition. It leads us down the road to end all. 
Wow. So he walked by the Word of God, but he also walked by a place of prayer. If he would have stopped at the altar, I believe that long before he got wrong information, he could have heard from God. Listen, I don't go to a palm reader to find out what's going on in my life. I don't care to open up the newspaper and read my horoscope. I don't care to go to the...